So right now we are at Funkhaus Berlin and um, this building was um, built right after the end of the Second World War. Uh, Berlin already had a broadcasting center um, that was located in Masurenallee. And so after the end of the Second World War and the division of Berlin into various parts, the existing f uh, broadcasting center was located in the Brit British sector. Um, that's why it led to a situation where all the communist radio stations were not allowed to send from there anymore. And um, finally the Soviet administration then decided that the GDR should get their own broadcasting center. So there were a couple of locations where they were looking at. Finally they came here because um, of the uh, location directly to the riverside and also because uh, one of the power plants was directly in the neighborhood so um, the electricity and the heating for this place was guaranteed. So what they did then, uh, so on this property there was only um, one building existing before the war and it was a veneer factory and then all the other parts of the building were built from 51 um, to 56. Um, they were having a quite, uh, how to say, they were under pressure regarding time. So the first radio station started here on the last day of uh, 51. So when everything was still under construction, they already started uh, broadcasting from here. Right now we are at the largest purpose-built recording studio of the world. So um, this Hall 1 here at Funkhaus um, has a volume of 12,300 uh, cubic meter. So Studio 1 at Abbey Road is not even as half as big as this one. So nowadays we use uh, this property and the studios uh, of course still for recording but we don't do only recording. So what we what we are doing is to have live concerts here. For example, last year in March we had Depeche Mode playing here. In this one, uh, they, it was a record release concert. Yeah, what we are trying or what we are uh, going to do is uh, to have a lot of concerts, to have uh, festivals going on here. Uh, we have uh, movie shootings. We have uh, fashion shootings. So. Uh, we developed this place into a creative melting pot with a focus on music, of course, uh, music, art and uh, young creative companies. The special thing about all the studios here in the production complex is that they are all built in house and house construction. So you can imagine uh, it like being a box in a box. So we have one outside house and then they built eight inner houses all on own foundations and by that the studios are completely isolated against the outside world. That means a plane could fly directly over the building inside the studios, you would not hear it. Um, that's one of the points. And then, especially for this studios, if you look around at human hate, um, you have those blank panels surrounding the orchestra pit. So uh, back in the 50s, they wanted to find a solution for uh, the recording studio uh, problem, that means if musicians are playing inside a recording studio, then they can't hear themselves or each other very well because of the absorption in the studio. And they wanted to find a solution to this problem without using any technical equipment. Back in the 50s, they wanted uh, to have a solution for this. So what they did is to create these blank panels and now if the orchestra or the mu musicians are playing in the middle, then they will get reflections from those blank panels and that exactly leads to the situation where the musicians can hear each other and uh, uh, themselves very well. The, the recording would take, in the, would take part in the upper um, area of that recording studio. So it's a quite sophisticated system. You have reflections uh, here in the lower level, but the recording would not be affected because recording takes place much, uh, much higher. If you look around, you see those columns uh, on the walls, for example, and also if you look to the ceiling, you have those half circle shaped um, items there. And 
they are here for creating diffusity. That means the sound waves hit the ceiling and then they will be reflected equally into all uh, directions. And uh, that's what uh, creates diffusity then at the end. Uh, between those columns you see the absorbing materials um, who absorb certain frequencies um, over the time. And um, the next thing what you see if you look up to the ceiling is the trapezoid shape of the studios. Um, if you would have parallel length side walls in a studio of that size, then uh, you would get reflections and also you would get echo and interference. So um, to avoid that, they chose the trapezoid shape in all of the large recording studios here. So if one enters that studio, you may have the feeling that you are in a rectangular room. And you really only see it if you look up to the ceiling, then you see it's getting smaller towards um, this direction. The next interesting thing about the ceiling is that it is hanging. So it's not lying on the walls, it is a hanging and swinging ceiling. So these are some of the details what makes this studio uh, like Daniel Barenboim said, in his opinion, is a, it is acoustically the best recording studio of the world.